have to leave at 10.15. We have another 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> There's no rule that you have to use all 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but if we had 10 hours, we wouldn't have enough time to exhaust everything that involved Mark, right? Okay. So what would you like to do? So, so, um, uh, you want to have questions? You got questions? Yes. yes. Oh, hang on. I'm going to bring a mic to you. I have that this memory cool. that she uh -huh. sang songs in Hebrew. Yes, she did. did. And like Israeli folk dancing. Yes, we have a whole record yes. of that. Yes. She loved it. I grew up with her that way. Yeah. That music I have like, a great story about that. When she was in Israel, um, she, she walked around. Yeah. Walked all day and all night, and she was exhausted, and her feet were hurting, and she was like feeling terrible. And her friend Betty Redder said, "You know, Martha, it's so sad that you're not feeling well enough because they're dancing in the hotel tonight." And she's like, "Forget it, I'm dancing." <laughs> she danced all night, and then decided to dance through the rest of Israel. So she had terrible feet, but if she was dancing, yeah. she could enjoy herself. And she did do her first album was Hebrew folk songs, and she was very well known in the folk singing circuit. And Hebrew folk songs in the Catskill was like a huge part of her life. Somebody else had a question. Yes, was Yiddish, um, tell me about her relationship to Yiddish that made it possible for her to to do this when, because, I mean, it, it didn't, it, it doesn't seem like she was from a Yiddish speaking background. Well, she was, so she was from Vienna, and oh. she spoke, grew up speaking Yiddish and well, German. Well, her, her, her grandfather was Hasidic. Yes. And he learned, she learned a lot of these things, including the Freilach, from him. It's true that the, the Germans looked down on Yiddish. I mean, I remember uh, Gerhard Bronner was a, a cabaretist in Vienna that uh, translated some of my things. I translated some of his things. I wrote to Martha about him. Mm -hmm. I thought that uh, his, his work should come to America just like Dr. Bell. And she was mm -hmm. very interested. It never happened. But he, he was a genius. And he, I, I remember we took him once to a, a, a Yiddish opera. And I said, well, how did you learn? Uh, 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 where, where did you pick up Yiddish? He said, I didn't pick it up. I left it in the gutter where I found it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the attitude of the most Viennese toward Yiddish. Right. But, no, but Martha was open to every culture. No, but she loved it. She, her parents had a restaurant, a Jewish restaurant, and she would, she was three years old, but, get up but, on the table and But her Yiddish was not, was not the Yiddish of our grandparents. Right. It was not the Lidrock and Galician. It was Deutschmark. Okay. It was very, much closer to German than most Yiddish. Thank because she grew up speaking German. That was her, her first native language. So and she loved Goethe and Heidegger. Yeah, <laughs> but that ability to do to straddle those two cultures seems pretty unique on her part. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Twelve, twelve. Rare. Rare. Yeah. Well, the lead six and seventeen. So <laughs> <laughs> she spoke seven. Yeah. I speak uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> two languages. Now, now, now. Okay, we, we can do that now. Yeah. We sing with us.